What I'm about to show you is gonna make building your Elementor pages and layouts much faster. Also improve your designs with cleaner layouts and improve the performance. We're gonna be using clamps inside of our containers to create fluid sections. And I've got you covered with an easy to use framework and free template. Let me show you how it works. Here is a layout and page that I've built using this framework that I'm gonna show you. Check out the spacing. It is clean, it's consistent, and just having a consistent layout like this with even spacing and padding throughout the page, this is a very huge part of keeping a design looking clean. And here is the same exact page, but I removed the framework. Now there's no padding, inside of our sections. That's why we see the content hugging to the top. And that's why everything looks scrunched up. Now, the problem when it comes to adding new sections is this. We add our section in here. Let me drop in text so we could see it. And we have to, every single time, go to advance to our padding. We got to unlock it, we got to go to RAM, we got to figure out the conversion between pixel and RAM, and then we have to manually set this up each time, and that is just for desktop. We'll have to do the same thing for mobile as well, which means we have to start all over. But we're gonna solve this tedious process by not adding any padding at all. Use this framework I'm gonna show you, and then all we gotta do is go to our classes and add something like a section large, or a section extra large, or a section extra extra large, or we could have a section small. And the best part about this is we are using clamp, so it is fluid, which means it's going to adjust based on the screen size. Let me show you. Here we have a section. You notice the spacing around it. It's used in the class. So let's go and shrink the size. Now, when we get to right about here, okay, we could see the padding taking effect. And this is 5 rem or 80 pixels on the side, which is great for desktop because we want to have that breathing room. We don't want it to hug too tight to the sides. But when we get to mobile, we do want to remove that space. But check this out as we reduce the size. There's no jump. Instead, it is gradually getting smaller on the paddings. So when we take it all the way down to mobile, it is going to be 20 pixel padding on the right and left. The top and bottom is also fluid. It just doesn't move as much. It's a lot easier to see the side padding. But what this does, having it fluid like this means we do not need to set it up for desktop, tablet, and mobile, and there's no jump. We only set it up once and it gives perfect padding no matter what size screen the user is watching the site on. And this is what it means to be fluid. To use a framework, we just go to the outer container, which is our each individual section, and we're just going to add a set of classes. I got one here for my header. I could go and add section dash hero, and then we just go into each one of our sections and we apply the size we want to give. Like I'm going to give a section M for medium. Here I'll give a section L for large, and then I'll keep moving along. And look how fast I could do this. I could go ahead and apply this framework to the page in less than a minute. And what we're gonna do is Open up the structure because I want to show you. This is really important. This is going to apply to our outer sections. Now, some of our sections, they have inner containers. We're not doing this to our inner containers. This applies specifically to our sections that we are adding. And it makes it a lot easier to understand when we build our layout to give these our labels. And don't forget in your section, in your layout, to go to your additional options and to give the HTML tag section as well. This is just proper way for good SEO and markup. But check it out, we're just going to keep going through. I'm going to apply these and then there are more as well. Let's say right here, I want to give spacing around the content. I'm going to give a section L, but I want this to be more narrow. So I'm going to space and add a new one. This is going to be section narrow which is going to give it about a thousand pixel width in the content, or I wanna make this even smaller. I'm just gonna put narrow dash X S for extra small. We have several options for this, but let's go ahead and finish this up. So this is all that needs to be done. I'm already finished setting it up. Let's go ahead and give this 
a narrow as well. So we could keep this content narrow. Then we have one right here. See, this image is in full width. I want this image to stretch all the way out, or maybe you want your content to stretch to the edges. Now we could go in the editor and start changing it, but why when we have a class system? I'm gonna put section full, and it's gonna stretch it all the way out. Now, let me show you how to apply this framework and start using it. There's a link in the description of this video that'll take you to this article. And in this article, I have our predefined classes. We'll go over these in a moment. But the first step is going to go to our CSS template. You could click on the copy code and then go to wherever you're putting your CSS. For me, I'm gonna use a code management plugin. I got another video on why I use code management plugins. I'll leave a link to that somewhere up here. But I'm using Fluent Snippets, it's a free one. I'm going to simply paste this in here and then save it. And this is 100% ready to go. You do not need to edit it. This is years of design experience coming up with a framework like this. So feel free to use it as it is. But if you want to edit it, I'll show you how coming up later in the video. Once your CSS template is saved, you're ready to go. Go ahead and use these classes as your framework. This is what it is. So the one in green, you're just gonna copy this as it is. I'm gonna copy a section XXL right here. Let's go to this section. I'm gonna remove the class that I've already added and add in the section XXL. And then looking back at the classes, you got section XXL, XL, L, all the way down to XXS, which is just t-shirt sizes. Think of it as that. It makes it so much easier to use and memorize. We also have our section hero. By default, it's at 100 VH, meaning it's taken up 100% of the height of the screen. I'll show you how to change this in a moment. The other one is our section full. This is going to make our section full all the way to the size. There's not gonna be any padding. Maybe you want an image or something to cover the entire screen, which is what we did right here on our bottom section. Next up, we have our section narrow and section narrow XS, which is our extra small narrow. This is gonna be really useful. It's gonna be the section offset. This is specific for banners that have the overlay header. Let me show you. This is one using the overlay header, which means we had to build our header and use a negative margin to pull the page up. So right here, I'm gonna pull the page all the way up. Now, normally, we always build these inside of a header template, but for the sake of the video, I'm just building it all inside of the same page. And this one is 88 pixels height, which means we need to pull the page up 88 pixels. Now, if I were to add, let's say, a smaller hero banner, let's say I don't want it to be full screen and I just use the XXL, this is great for like your sub pages, you know, your about page, contact page. Because our header is pulling up the content by 88 pixels or whatever the margin bottom is, well, we're gonna have more padding on the bottom than we have at the top. And this is where the section offset is going to offset that difference and we are gonna have even padding. Look here, all the padding is equal and even. Let's go ahead and remove this, take it down to small. And I'm also gonna give this a section narrow. That way these now are tighter. This looks better and everything is even. Look at the margin on the sides. You want a perfect line on your left margin, your left index going all the way down. This is what makes designs look clean, and sometimes you can't notice it, but when the padding and spacing is off throughout the design, that is where it looks unprofessional, it looks amateurish, and a lot of the times is where you can't really put your finger on it, but you know something is off in the design. This is it, now this framework right here, this is the framework I have been using for years now inside of my design process. To get started, you're gonna to wanna to either bookmark this page or copy and paste all of this, but it's 
really easy to memorize after you've used it a few times. And if you use it across all your sites like I do, it makes the process of building your layouts so much faster, more efficient, and also keeps the designs clean. Now let's dive into the code and I'm gonna show you how to edit it if you choose to. Now, if you are not a coder, you don't know CSS, or you're not a very experienced designer, I highly recommend to leave it as it is and use a system as it is built. It's 100% perfectly good to go. But if you do know what you're doing and you want to change it, I'll show you how. You would do this by editing your variables. These are the sizes that are already set inside of the CSS template. For our side paddings, we have five rim, which is 80 pixels. This is gonna be for desktop. Your desktop is gonna be the max. Your min is gonna be for your mobile. So by the time it shrinks to mobile, we're gonna have it at 20 pixels. Maybe you want it at 24 pixels. In that case, Case, you would just change this to 1.5 rim and then let's go ahead and update this this is only a comment right here just so that way it's easy to recognize what the size is for our rim but that is it now I update it and I'm going to have 24 pixels on the side in mobile for a mobile design I highly suggest to only leave it at 20 or 24 anything less than that or more than that is not going to look good on a phone then we have the same for our top and bottom paddings here. So maybe you want your XXL to be bigger. We'll just increase it for your max, which is your desktop, and then decrease it for your minimum, which is for your mobile. Now, I don't really adjust it too much for the top and bottom because they look great just as they are. I only added a little bit of a decrease that way, well, it just makes it easier for you to make it fluid if you want to. The option is there for you. And then you can see even on the ones down here, the smaller sections, well, I leave them the same for top and bottom on desktop and mobile, but that is what I do in my design systems. It's totally up to you and the option is there. Now here's something you are going to probably want to edit, and this is gonna be the height for your hero. I have it set at 100, but maybe you don't want it full screen. Maybe you want it 80% of the screen. So I'm gonna change it to 80 VH, add the section hero, and now it's 80% the size of the screen. The next that you are gonna want to edit, no matter what site you're using, if you are using the overlay header, is gonna be the offset. Because remember, ours was 88 pixels. I find them usually to be between 80 and 90. So whatever that measurement is, and that is the negative margin, the one that you have in your header, pulling the content up, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have the same exact metric here. So I'm gonna change this to 88 pixels, and that's gonna give us a perfect offset. Next up is gonna be the width for our narrow sections. For our narrow, I have it at 1000 pixels or 62.5 RAM. And then for the small one, the extra small narrow section is gonna be a 720 at 45 RAM. You might want this to be smaller. You might want it at 700 or 600. If you do, just go ahead and adjust this. And that is it, it is good to go. Now, if you are advanced and you wanna even tinker more with the clamp, if you want to adjust the calculations on the clamp and you know what you're doing, then go ahead and feel free to edit these right here. You could do that by searching for a clamp, CSS, converter, and then you get a lot of options here for converters. Well, basically you're just gonna set this up and then you are just gonna change right here this part, which is gonna be our calculation. And then you would replace this calculation right here. But this calculation, it is good to go. I've tested it, I use it, and this works seamlessly. Like I said, this is all pretty much 100% good to go, but feel free to make this template your own. And the goal of it is build it once it's done and then going forward you just use 
your classes. You don't have to go and tinker through these paddings anymore. This is going to speed up your workflow. And this is also a good first look at what is going to change in Elementor when we get the 4.0 builder, when they have classes. Start using this now and you're going to get more familiar and more ready when the new builder comes out. This is one of those videos that had a lot of deep thought, a lot of planning and a very big goal. My goal and mission in this video was to improve and change the way Elementor users are building their sites. So I definitely would love to hear from you how this system, how this framework is helping you build your pages inside of Elementor. Let us know inside of the comments how this is working for you. And if you did find value in this, then make sure to like and subscribe to support this channel and what we are doing here. I really do appreciate the support. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching and I'll see you back again in the next video.